Hi, welcome to the lesson on substring functions. And you should be coming to this lesson from the lesson on numeric functions. And so you should already have these files open. If you don't, pause the video, go into your workbook, and open up the list of files that's called out. First function I want to show you is first functions I should say are the lower and upper functions and these will take a column and either put the data in lowercase or uppercase just as you can see here. You can also use the aliases for these functions lcase or ucase and that works just the same. There we go, we'll just go back to the way it was. And let's head off now and have a look at the substring function. As you can see, what we're doing, what I'm showing you here is I'm taking the phone field and I'm extracting out the various elements of a phone number discreetly using the substring function. And of course, this presumes that we always have a 10 digit phone number for this function to work properly in this context. And in case of my data, I believe that that is the, the scenario. So the substring function, if we look at the syntax of that, accepts up to three arguments. The first argument that's always required is the column name. The second argument is where we want to start within the string. And the third argument is what we want to extract out. This is for the position where we want to start, this is one based, it's not zero based, so one truly is the first character. Uh, a lot of functions are zero based, meaning zero is actually one, but we don't have to deal with that here. So one is the first position, and it's saying extract three characters. In this point, we're saying start at the fourth character and pull out three characters. And you can see indeed it's doing that. And for the last one, start at the seventh character and extract four characters. Now there's a, as I said, we don't need to specify this argument. For example, I could come in if I just wanted to extract out the everything but the area code, I could come in here and say phone 4 and what this is going to do is it's starting at the fourth position it's going to give me everything to the end of string so if I run this you'll see that indeed that's what it's done okay let's head off and look at the concat function the concat function allows us to concatenate two strings together and I haven't shown you this yet, but in this file, I actually have multiple, multiple being two in this case, select statements. And so if I, it's kind of a, a nice feature of the workbench, if I want to execute a specific SQL statement within here, I just highlight the one I want and hit the execute button and it's going to execute that one. So the concatenate function is going to take a list of columns or literals that I want to concatenate. And so in this case what I'm doing is I'm concatenating the first name followed by a single space followed by the last name. And you can see the output down here how that's. Now if we run the second one you'll see that I'm concatenating the last name column, the ID column, and the date of birth column delimited with the pipe. So for example, that's the delimiter in, if you're in healthcare for HL7. You can use any delimiter you want. So you can already see a, a pretty valuable use of, of the concat function. You could write a query to extract comma delimited or some form of delimited data directly out. 
In this one, I want to introduce you, I want to talk about the concatenation function presumes that it's concatenating character data. And so if we have a look at the schema, you'll see that that last name is indeed a character field. It's a, it's a varchar. That ID, even though one might look at that on face value and think it's a number, is a character field. And date of birth. Well, date of birth is a date time field. So what we need to do to date of birth is we need to cast it. So the cast function allows me to cast one data type as another. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm casting date of birth, and I'm applying a function to that as well, and I'm casting it as a character. If I didn't do that, I would end up getting an error. In fact, you can comment that out on your own and, and see what would happen if you, if you do that. So another thing I want to call your attention to is the concat function that within the concat function that with SQL I can nest functions within functions. So for example here this cat within the cast function I'm actually nesting the date function as applied to date of birth. And within the concat function I'm nesting the cast function. So you can nest functions, SQL functions, within SQL functions, which is, is indeed what we're doing here. Now let's head off to our last one, or second to last one, I should say, which is the string length function. And what this function is going to do is it's going to count, essentially do a count on all of the characters and give us a count back. And this function can be useful for statistical measurement. It can also be useful when applied to case statements, which we haven't covered yet, so I won't say any more about that subject until we until we get to it. Finally, last but certainly not least, I want to move and cover the trim function. I can see case doesn't matter, but I'm going to be retentive here and put it in uppercase. Um, I would have shown you the trim function way back here when I showed you this function. However, as it turns out, when you in, in MySQL, when you apply the concat function, it inherently does a trim as part of it. So in order to show you this, this function here, I needed to mock up some hard-coded data. And by the way, as you can see, I'm not going after a column. I'm going after a literal string which is something that you can actually do within SQL, MySQL, to be particular. So in this, I've got this field called foo that's got a bunch of leading and trailing spaces. And you can see the leading spaces, and you can see the trailing spaces. And what I'm doing is I'm applying the trim function to that string up there that I essentially cut and pasted. And so you can see that what it's doing is it's removing the leading and trailing spaces. So that can be a useful function for you as well. So that's all I have on string functions. Again, in your student workbook, what you will find is a link to the plethora of string functions that are available out on the MySQL website where their documentation is at. I'll see you in the next lesson, which is going to be covering date and time functions later.